Kazi Nazrul Islam is the national poet of Bangladesh. He is counted among the greatest of the Bengali literary personalities. His poetry is as multifaceted as his life was. Born in Churulia in West Bengal, Kazi Nazrul Islam was a great poet, musician, journalist, wandering bard, anti-colonial fighter, all rolled into one. Known as Bidrohi, the rebel, his poetry ranges from love poems to radical literary creations. In his own words, Najrul has said, I am a poet of the present and not a prophet of the future. My birth in this country and this society does not mean that I shall remain constricted and confined to them. No, I belong to all countries and to the entirety of humanity. Truly, Nazrul is poet of the world, poet for all times. I spoke to Professor Nasid Kamal. Professor Kamal is a renowned singer and musician, especially known for her original and beautiful renderings of Nazrul songs. A scholar of repute, she has written a number of books on Nazrul, including translation of his poems and songs. Thank you, Professor Nasid Kamal, for speaking to Doordarshan and all India Radio. Let's begin with a brief overview of the life and work of Kazi Nazrul Islam as a poet, a rebel, a social activist, and a bit about yourself. Uh, that's a very nice introduction, Mr. Rajesh Jha. Thank you very much for inviting me on this revered occasion. I must say that poet Kazi Nazrul Islam had so many versatilities that it is really difficult to summarize in a few words. Firstly, he was born in the colonial 1899 and he started his life in Bardhaman, although his family had arrived from Patna, which is uh, not part of West Bengal, but he moved, his family moved few generations back from Patna to West Bengal. And his father, he lost, uh, he used to play Pasha, which is a kind of gamble, and he lost all his land, and he died when the poet was only eight years old. So the poet from eight years old to 17 years old, he had a very difficult time in schooling himself. He was very poor, and his family also went into poverty, and he had to do many kinds of chores to get his ends met. Uh, later on, some very nice people, one Mr. Rafizuddin recognized his talent and made him like his son and brought him to East Bengal, which was in Maimon Singh, where he studied for one year. Then he went back to Searsol, which was in uh, West Bengal, and then he completed class 10. Then he appeared for the exam for enrollment in the army, the British army in the World War. So he went off in as a just 18 year old he went off to the war and from karachi barracks that was the first time when he started writing stories his first story is called the autobiography of the vagabond this one also i have translated later on when he when the world world war finished he came to uh, kolkata when he lived there on a december night of 1919 he just wrote, he just penned, he was uh, sitting with his friend, Comrade Muzaffar, and he wrote the rebel poem. This poem was published and he became very, very well known for this poem and thus his literary journey emerged. Around 1925, 26, he wrote the first couple of songs which were mainly about uh, rebelling or uh, inspirational songs. But gradually he turned into a great maestro, both in music and in writing. As a lyricist, he also had a lot of copies of um, Hafiz, the great poet of Persia, of whom he was the great fan. And gradually he developed music to a very, very great length. So simultaneously he was writing and tuning his songs, teaching the artists. He was in the HMB studios working there. He was working for the radio where he revealed many new ragas, which is very difficult for maestros. He made 16 new ragas, like new combinations of Indian Shastriya Sangeet. And then he wrote poems, he wrote novels, he wrote um, essays. He uh, was editor, editor for a very renowned 
paper called Dhumketu. And for that, he went to jail for one year. The British government put him in jail. So his life was very colorful, but, but at a very early age, in 1942, he got a very, very debilitating disease. This is a version of the, it's called a pig's disease, P like P-Y-G, pig's disease. And after that, he felt silent. It is prophetic that in one of the songs, he had said that the poet will be silent. I will sing a few lines and I'm sure the, uh, the audience will um, identify with it. It says, in the midst of lots of flowers, the poet is silent. And that's how he remained till 1976. In August 29th, he met with his creator and he left for the eternal journey. That's his life in short. And in 1972, he was brought from West Bengal to this current Bangladesh by Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Mujibur Rahman, Mujibur Rahman, Mujibur Rahman, a friend of my grandfather, Abbasuddin Ahmed, who was also a very, very legendary singer. And from that, I had inherited the lust for his songs and the love for Nazrul Islam. So this song goes like this. <laughs> Nirab ke nukubi Phule roj al shai Nirab ke nukubi Bhore rohai Kanna pawai Bhore rohai Kanna pawai a very precise and yet comprehensive introduction of the life of the great poet Nazrul. It was indeed fascinating to hear about this great personality. Now, uh, I wish to know about the distinctive contribution of Kazi Nazrul Islam to Bangla literature. How do you look at his poetry and other literary works in general? In general, uh, poet uh, Rabindranath Tagore, he received the Nobel Prize in 1930. And we know that when Tagore was writing, his writing style was so predominant. All the other poets who were around him and around that time in the 20s, in the 19, uh, 19, from 1900 to 1930s, all the other poets kind of had a similar pattern of writing. They had a similar way of expressing themselves. Sometimes it was indistinguishable from the writing of poet Rabindranath Thakur. During this time, Kazi Nazrul Islam in 1919, when he first wrote his Bidruhi poem, his family was very well known in Patna for knowing uh, Arabic, uh, Persian, and Hindi, Urdu, and Bangla, the five different languages. And it was very common for them to write using all these five languages in their poems or in their literary works, especially in kind of folk uh, pattern which is called the letor. His forefathers used to write songs for the letor. Letor is a group of uh, singers who fight like the poets fight and they mainly fight about mythological stories from the Hindu Puran and Hindu uh, mythology like Ramayana Mahabharata. So Nazrul Islam was very well versed in that because his uncle used to write these songs and sometimes as a child, when his uncle used to write these songs in his table, Nazrul used to fill up the gaps and his uncle recognized that. He said, Nuru, did you fill up these songs? And then Nazrul also used to go to the masjid and the day the, um, the muazzin was absent, he had a very sweet voice. He used to give the azan for the, for the Islamic people. So Nozrul can be called a very versatile genius, Shabboshachi, we say in Bangla, which in English translated would be ambidextrous, somebody who can write about Hindu mythology on the one hand and uh, Islamic principles on the other. And through his writings, he has exhibited that, especially in Bidruhi, there's a lot of, lot of um, 
reference to Hindu mythology on Shiv, and there's a lot, uh, lot of mythology coming from the Greek literature. All this combination from, from his Persian studies, all this combination and this feeling of uh, um, rebelling against something that has been uh, forced upon him has been a new situation which had not been there during the era of poet uh, Rabindranath Tagore. So it is said that Nazrul Islam broke that uh, typified writing style of Tagore and he brought his own style, which included inclusion of new words like Persian words, Kedara, like Sarfaraz in his song, Karu Sarfaraz. This is an Urdu word or Hindi word which was used. He used to write in Hindi, he used to write in Urdu also. And in Kolkata, if you go through the Tito, they have made in Nazrul Tito, you will see his Hindi handwriting, Urdu handwriting. He gave tunes to the songs for movies. He even gave tunes to the song for a movie, Gora, which Ravindranath Thakur had originally written and the songs were given by him. So in general, there is hardly any field where he has not contributed and his writing style is completely different. For example, he uses the rhythm of the tabla. For example, he goes, he was a great admirer of uh, Mustafa Kamal Atatürk, And that's how my own father, Mustafa Kamal, he was the chief justice of this country. He got the name from Qazi Nazrul Islam. And Nazrul Islam told him to be the upholder of law. And so he did. He shunned all music. His father was a musician. He shunned everything and he studied law and he became the chief justice of his country. And the poet wrote a poem about Mustafa Kamal Atatur. Oi kepeche pagli maer damal chele kamal bhai Ashur pure shor utheche jor se shamal shamal tai Kamal, tunne kamal kiya bhai. Kamal, tunne kamal kiya bhai. Kamal, tunne kamal kiya bhai. You know, like this, he had the rhythm in his poem, which was left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. And he, you can imagine the soldiers punching there, marching there. And he wrote the Ranu Shungit, which is the march song later on adopted for Bangladesh. He didn't write it for Bangladesh. He wrote it for the young generation. And he said he was a man of the youth. So he wrote, Chal, 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 chal. Urdhu gagune baji madal, nimne utala tharuni tal. Urunu prater turunu dal, chal, 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 chal. On the other hand, he wrote ghazals in the same style as the Persian Ghazal, which Hafiz has written. So no other poet, although Otul Prashad had did some experimentation with Ghazal writing uh, in Bangla, two, three of his songs are in, in Ghazal form, but Nazrul really established both the tune and the Ghazal writing, the lyrics. Bulbuli nirab nargis buni Jharabunu gulapi bilap shuni bulbuli nirab nargis vuni. His main theme was about the two religions, Islam and um, Hinduism, which was predominant during the time when he was growing up. And he was very, very angry at the hypocrisy of both the religions. We have seen that extremism is common in both the religions. We see the mullahs being so difficult. They wear their beard and they give diktats. Similarly, the Hindus, they wear their tikis and they give diktas and they always conflict and they do not respect that we are all human beings and we are the son of the same, son and daughters of the same mother. This was the poem for which he Anandamoi Ragamon, where he rebelled against both the Hindu religion and the Muslim religion, and he was taken to jail for inciting public, inciting the public. So he stayed there in jail for one year. He was treated very badly. He went on hunger strike, and Rabindranath Tagore dedicated one of his books, uh, Basant, to him which he did not receive in jail. He was transferred to another jail. And then after a few months, he gave up his hunger strike. There was one lady, Biroja Shundari, 
who used to love Nazrul. At her request, he was able to give up the hunger strike. So there's a lot to say, there's a lot to learn from his life, how he stood by his own convictions. Indeed, the life of Nazrul Islam is indeed inspiring, even for the modern generation. I wanted to ask you about his most famous poem, Bidrohi. Now in that poem, he talks about, it is, it is a great poem, even now it, it is recited at so many places. And his poetry, as you said, is inspired to a great extent by social concerns. Could you uh, tell us it something is. about uh, the element of, uh, uh, of uh, speaking against social injustice and exploitation in his poems that to a great extent inspired uh, many people in both the, con both the countries, India and Bangladesh? Even, even now, I've heard that uh, Mamata Badarji, she has told uh, poet Kazi Nazrul Islam's granddaughter, Aninita Kazi, that from a very early age in her life, she has been inspired by poet Kazi Nazrul Islam's works. And of course, in Bangladesh, we are all inspired by his work, not only the rebel, Kuli Mojur, all the other poems that he has written. He's written uh, Temple and Masjid. He has written one of the works that I have translated. It was an editorial. He was saying that we are fighting about the buildings, which are only bricks and only stones, but we are not saving the lives of a human being. If a human being has fallen into water, we should go to save him. We should not first think whether he's wearing a turban, whether he's a Hindu or whether he's a Muslim. Our first concern should be about humanity. And then, as you said about social justice, uh, in, in the um, poem, the Bidruhi poem, which at night, Comrade Muzaffar has written about this poem, how he was saying Nazrul was going, you know, wayward. He was not being able to sleep. He was insomniac. He grabbed a piece of paper. And in those days, you remember with the pen, you had to dip it in ink and you start writing. So he was writing this Bidruhi poem and then suddenly his ink finished. So he scribbled the rest of it in uh, pencil. Ami Bidruhi Rano Klanto. I am the rebel. I am tired of all these wars. I will be quiet on that day. When the people who have not, their cries will not fill the sky, will not fill the atmosphere. People who have not their cries does not stop. Till then, I will continue being a rebel. I will continue speaking against social injustice. So this is a very, very big message which has inspired all the youths of Bangladesh and like you said elsewhere, because Professor Kabir Choudhury uh, who has left us, he has translated this poem very beautifully. And all over America, many, many professors, they contact me, sadhus, uh, they contact me, because in his works, he has written so much on Indian uh, Hindu mythology that he is also of the Shakta Bhakta tradition, as well as the Islamic tradition. He's truly somebody who has risen above from his own personal religion that he has inherited. And he has become a human being who can go above all of us and fight for social injustice. He kept on saying that all these people, Great. You have given a great introduction and a great idea about what Nazrul stood for. But Didi, before we end, I cannot hold the temptation of listening to a few of the songs from Nazrul that you consider to be his great songs. So before we end, could you please just uh, sing a couple of lines from some of the more uh, liked songs okay. of Nazrul? Okay, I will. One is on the weather, the, <clears throat> the beautiful rain that is coming. Room, <laughs> Ranga charu nugha Rumachuma, 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 
emphasis from the weather, the beautiful Ruma Chuma from the Barsa. And then he sings from Kirtan. <clears throat> This is from the Hindu uh, tradition of Radha Man Bhanjan. And then he sings his Islamic songs. <clears throat> karu bhar shakurish ne tui ek allar bhar shakur karu bhar shakurish ne tui ek allar bhar shakur karu bhar shakurish ne tui allah jodi shahay thakin allah jodi shahay thakin bhavna ki shir ki shir dar Bhabna ki shir ki shir dar, karu bhar shakuri shini tui. Then lastly, from his inspirational song that we are going through such a difficult time during a meeting in Prishak Shammelon, he had written this song. Durga mugiri kantar moru, dustaru parabaru he, lunghi te habiratri nishiti jatri rahushiya. This is a deadly night. This is a deadly pandemic. We have to cross the road. We have to cross the river. And all the <clears throat> men in the ferry boat, you have to be hushiyar. You have to be fully alert. Dulite che tori bhulite che jal bhulite che machipa. Chidiya che pal ke bhuri be hal ka Hindu na or a Muslim, oi ji gashi kun jan. Kanda di balu dubichi manush, shantan murmar. Durga mugiri kantar muru, dustaru parabaru he. Lunghi te habiratri nishite, jatri rahushiya. You started by saying that Nazrul Islam is the poet of the world. And this message, whether he is Hindu or Muslim, now he is in my boat, I have to save him. This is the truth of the whole world. This is the pandemic we are going through, whether they are of black, white, Asian, Caucasian, whatever, ethnic, majority, minority, we have to save everybody. Hail humanity. That was his message. Thank you. Thank you so much, Didi, for giving this wonderful introduction about Nazrul Islam and making us familiar about many of his songs and poems. It was wonderful talking to you. Thank you, Nashid Kamal, for talking to Doordarshan and All India Radio for Prasar Bharti in Dhaka. Thank you.